Alright people, so this episode of Raw was okay, had some, you know, it didn't have like a lot of total shit where I would rate something like 0.5 out of 5 stars, it didn't have a lot of that, just had a lot of mediocre, uh, tad, a, a tad below average things, and it had some good things too, but you know, I, I'll get into it all, get into all of it. Start off the show, we have Reigns coming out, cutting a promo, and you know, he has impressed me on the mic. And the, his past two promos, or just uh, the, the two promos that I can remember, the one I main event and this one. Good promo, badass. I like when the crowd starts chanting, Cena sucks. He's like, yeah, you're damn right, Cena sucks. Yeah, and then, and then it turns out later in the night, he's fucking raising Cena's hand like a fucking jobber. Fucking tarred. I mean, I hope that's just like a ploy. But, <laughs> I mean, I was sitting there like, this better be fucking... Uh, you know, just a, a trick to, to get Cena to fucking like him, you know, but, but, but if, 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 you know, they're going with this, like, Reigns and Cena doing this tag team bullshit, you know, or, like, being friends, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not, I'm not happy about it, but Reigns cuts a good promo here, seems badass again, calls, uh, Kane Orton's bitch, I liked it, you know, I, I liked it a lot, um, Badass, almost attitude era ish, a little bit, you know, with the bitch, you know, calling Kane a bitch. Then they brawl afterwards, and it was a good brawl. I mean, you getting getting, uh, you know, the officials coming out there. I like when the officials come out there because it makes it seem like more real and genuine. You don't get the officials coming out there to break up a fight. Then you know, usually when the officials come out, it's like okay, the fight's over. But no. Jamie Noble gets thrown out of the way. Fit Finley gets speared. Fit Finley took the spear pretty good too. Got to admit, you know, nice to see him. You know, still in good enough shape. To, it, it's always nice, you know, when you see a guy come back or do something, you know, physical, and he can still take a bump. You know, like JBL taking the bump uh, during the Wyatt, or you know, getting clotheslined by one of the Wyatts. You know, it's good to know that they, you know, they're still in good shape and. You know, because I know when some wrestlers retire, you know, their bodies go to shit and they can barely move. You know, just like to bring that up, I guess. But, yeah, I liked it, you know. Then the, the ref gets choke slammed too. That was pretty cool. So, yeah, very good segment to start off the show here. I was happy. Very happy to, you know, and that's rare. It's rare that they start off the show with a good segment. And that was a very good segment. Then the Wyatt's defeat the Usos. It was, it was okay. You know, people start chanting, this is awesome. No, it wasn't awesome. I mean, like, it started off so boring, though. Like, the first, f like, seven minutes of the match was, like, complete boredom. Like, I'm sitting there, like, you know, I was thinking, you know, very good segment to start off the show. You know, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a good Raw. Then I watched the Wyatt match. I'm like, oh, no, this is going to be a long fucking night, people. Um, yeah, but, and then, and then it started to pick up a little bit, got a little bit more entertaining. But I mean, the first, like, seven minutes of the match, like, weighted down, you know? So, I gave it two and a half stars. Um, but yeah, it, it was okay. Wasn't, wasn't fucking, wasn't fucking good. It, it, it wasn't fucking, it was okay, alright? Then, we get, uh, Nikki and Alicia Fox is brawling. Nikki gets her one arm tied behind her back, then Alicia Fox refuses, and then, beats her up for like a few minutes it was boring the crowd wasn't happy either the crowd was like dead silent and so was i i was almost falling asleep probably i mean it was just boring it's like who fuck who the fuck cares about the divas division especially fucking the jobbers in the divas division who the fuck gives a shit i don't i can i hardly care about you know Paige and aj i do but you know it's not a big deal to me you know this is boring i don't give two shits about nikki bella you know, just stupid, stupid fucking little whatever brawl, if you want to even call it that. I mean, I thought it was retarded. Then we get Rusev defeating RVD. A little bit below average, wasn't horrible, but it wasn't good. I'll give it two out of five stars. Um, you know, RVD, you know, I thought he was supposed to, you know, when people get old, like RVD, he's not that old, but like he used to be jobbing out to certain people. But Rusev isn't one of those certain people. I mean, RVD is better than fucking Alexander Rusev, who can't even fucking talk. I mean, he can wrestle a little bit, Rusev can, but I think RVD's still a better wrestler than Ru 
Rusev this match, I mean, two out of five stars wasn't anything special. I'm, I'm fucking pissed off that, like, RVD's basically a jobber. Then Orton defeats Ambrose. I'm sure, like, all the fucking people are just going to go on the internet and say this was a great technical wrestling match. I'm sure the women, have, of course, who think they were probably fantasizing over this match, you know, are going to say this was a five-star classic, you know, and fucking say, oh, Orton is such a great wrestler. You know, this was not a good technical match, people. You had fucking boring rest holds and, you know, just basic fucking easy moves to do. Like, I see Orton just, like, yanking on his arm, on fucking Ambrose's arm. Like, that's not a good technical move, people. It had some good spots, but it was just so slow and dragged out. I'll give it two out of five stars. It wasn't horrible. It was far from horrible. But it's like, holy shit, pick up the pace, people. I mean... Um, it's so fucking slow. They're moving so slow in there. It was like a 20 minute match, 15 minute match, whatever, and they barely got any fucking moves in because they're going so goddamn slow. I mean, it's ridiculous. And then they, oh my god, the botch. It, it reminded me of the botch from Night of Champions 2012 between Orton and Del Rio. Uh, uh, Ambrose jumps and just lands there and stands there like a dumbass. Oh my god, it just looked retarded. I mean, it looked, it's embarrassing. So, I mean, it wasn't horrible. I, as I said, it, w it wasn't even close to being horrible, but it wasn't, it was below average. It was two out of five stars. And Ambrose loses, too, to fucking Orton. The boring-ass Randy Orton beats Ambrose, who can talk. He's got talent, a lot more talent than fucking Orton. That made me pissed off right there. Yeah, just keep pushing your same old two fucking people, Orton, seeing WWE. Yeah, how's that got you? It's got you fucking shit. You know, WWE fucking sucks because Orton and Cena are just beating everybody. <sighs> then Del Rio defeats the Ziggler. Okay to decent match here. You know, I, I'll give it 2.75 out of 5 stars. I feel this match was like 5 minutes, maybe 7 minutes. It had more moves in it and action than the fucking 15 minute Ambrose Orton match. I mean, they, they were going. I mean, it's fast paced. They're doing moves every couple seconds. I mean, I'm entertained or, you know, mildly entertained. And yeah, I mean, it was decent, you know, okay, decent match, passable. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I'll settle for this, I guess. I mean, uh, you know, they didn't give him much time to work with, but, you know, it's passable. You know, it's not, it, it was far from, uh, far from great, but far, far from horrible, too. Then we get Bret Hart coming back, and you know, I liked it, you know. Uh, he starts cutting a promo, and then Damien Sandow comes out dressed as Bret Hart. I don't know why, but I was laughing my ass off. I thought it was funny. You know, I, I don't know. I was just laughing really hard. Um, yeah, and I, I liked it. You know, Bret Hart punches Sandow. Um, I, I would love. I would have liked to see Sandow get put in the or what was his name, Sandhart or whatever. I would like to see him get put in the sharpshooter I mean I, I thought that would have been cool I mean Bret Hart I'm sure he could still do it I mean it's not like he's 80 years old or anything but you know it was a good segment I, I had a couple problems like and then it just made it seem like a, a little it's only like five or ten minutes long it made it seem like just a little ass segment like they didn't mean shit like Sheamus comes out and it's like they just transition right in the next segment it made it seem like not special I mean it's Bret fucking Hart people and they made it seem like just another fucking random segment. You know, just a normal segment. So I didn't really like that. But it was cool to see Bret Hart back. So I'll say it was a good segment. And it had to the Sandow thing was pretty funny too. So then that, that leads to a Sheamus and Sandow match. So Sheamus beats Sandow in the, mat, the worst match of the night, I think. 0.75 out of 5 stars. Boring ass, lame match. You know, it's between Sheamus who fucking is boring and stale as hell. And Sandow, a guy who's a different person every week. Um, but yeah, boring ass match. Then Jericho defeats Miz. Uh, a little bit below average. 2.25 out of 5 stars. Not, you know, just a little bit below average. Um, but, you know, I like the Miz's new character. It seems like a good character. It's obviously playing off the, the Rock heel of 2000 Hollywood Rock 2003 character. Um, but I hate the fact that Miz is like a pussy in fucking covering his face. I mean, he's fucking like 
every time he gets hit there. I mean, that's fucking stupid. It's lame. I mean, he's supposed to be a tough guy. I mean, everybody should be a tough guy. It's wrestling. But he looks like a pussy. And it messes up the fucking flow of the match when he goes out and like, Oh, my face. Oh, my face. Yeah. I mean, it's retarded. It's like the retardation sometimes the fucking company. So, you know, it, it, it wasn't horrible, but it just didn't like And then we get a promo from the Wyatt. From Bray Wyatt and Y2J. I like the promo. It was a good promo. So I guess overall it was decent, this whole segment. Then Paige and AJ defeat Funk the, the Funkadactyls. Okay at best. So I'll give it 2.5 out of 5 stars. Had some nice moves in there. But I mean, it's a fucking Divas match, people. I mean, how exciting can it get? And then... Why are AJ and Paige getting along? I mean, the, AJ just beat Paige, you know? And Paige was like fucking crying pretty much. Now they're just fucking BFFs. I mean, it makes no fucking sense. Again, the fucking creative team just being illogical right here. But, and then the Funkin' Dactyls break up after the match. I couldn't give, again, two shits about fucking Jobber Divas. You know, nobody fucking cared. You know, Jerry Lawler is going ape shit on commentary. Oh, it's great. They're fighting. It's great. He's getting basically, like, basically getting a boner and jacking off to this while I'm sitting there fucking bored out of my mind. And so is everybody else in the crowd. They couldn't give two shits about this either. Um, then we get Kofi defeating Cesaro. And this was probably the best match of the night wrestling wise. Good match was short. 3.25 out of 5 stars. No, it was going good. I only have one problem. Cesaro fucking loses again to the fucking Kofi Kingston, who has some talent. But, I mean, Cesaro should be beating Kofi Kingston like that. Fucking jobber Kofi Kingston beats Cesaro. Are you fucking serious? So fucking frustrating. You get a talent like fucking Cesaro. Fucking talented as hell. You can do some fucking crazy moves out there. I mean, he's catching Kofi Kingston. Like, Kofi Kingston jumping, like, ten fucking feet in the air, and then you got Cesaro catching him like a beast and fucking just manhandling him. And then Kofi beats him in, like, two minutes. I mean, two weeks in a row, too. Then, to make it worse, that fucking motherfucker who fucking acts like Martin Luther King, Biggie Langston comes out and fucking gives Cesaro a fucking... You know, the, ooh, you know, I don't even know what the fuck, they call it a clothesline, but it's more like a, oh, you know, he just hits you with his chest, you know. <sighs> just depressing to see a talented guy like Cesaro get beat by Kofi Kingston, and then, uh, I don't know, ran over by a fucking idiot who thinks he's Martin Luther King. Depressing. Depressing, people. Then, to make it more, to make matters worse, we get the fucking bull wrestling again. Bo Dallas defeats the fucking bull. Stupid fucking match. I don't even know why, but I'll give it a half. This was the worst match. I said Sheamus' this match was the worst. This was the worst. I'll give it a half star out of five. The one part I did enjoy was Bo was running around after the match, and he was like going, hey, hey, and he hit the bull. I thought that was funny. I laughed. You know, Bo Dallas, this character is actually pretty funny. I'm enjoying it. Um... So yeah, but that, that whole thing overall fucking sucked. Then we get the main event, Seth Rollins. I mean, yeah, we, we just couldn't have a legitimate finish here with Seth Rollins and Cena. We had to have a DQ, of course. We can't just have a legitimate finish. So uh, we get DQ'd, you know, a bunch of shit happens. It was basically a repeat from last week with a couple, you know, tweaks. Um, you know, Rollins is about to cash in, Ambrose comes out, and... Oh, it's all crazy. Uh, I didn't fucking like it, really. I mean, the match was actually pretty good. I'll give it 3 out of 5 stars. But, you know, decent match, I guess. 3 out of 5 stars is probably a generous rating, too. But, you know, just after the match, Reigns, of course. You know, fucking Superman Reigns with the fucking... Oh, Superman Punch. Oh, a Superman Punch. What a great fucking move that is. You know, just basically a repeat again from last week. I mean, it wasn't that entertaining, people. Then you get, like, Reigns and Cena having a love fest in the middle of the ring, you know, basically jagging each other off. I mean, should have just got out there and been sucking each other's dicks. I mean, seriously. But, you know, overall, okay show. Give it 5 out of 10 stars. Had some good shit, had some bad shit, but it was okay. And then we had the love fest afterward with Cena and Reigns. Again, I hope that's just like a ploy from Reigns' part to get him, you know, to trust Cena.
but you know, overall okay show. So there you go, people.